feelings, but Lord, allow us to exercise our faith. Allow your Holy Spirit to recall back to us according to your word. You never, you promised never to leave us nor forsake us. You've promised to be with us always, even to the end of the world. You've promised to be with us in, in hospitals and nursing homes and in rehabilitation centers and operating rooms. You've promised to be with us. You've promised to be with us even as we grieve and, 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 and mourn the going home of loved ones. You've promised to be with us. Let us know, Heavenly Father, that you are sensitive to our situations. You know everything about us. So, Lord, we ask right now that you help us be available to all that you desire us to be available to. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for all that you've done bringing us through challenges, bringing us through difficulties. We thank you. Thank you for our children, our grandchildren. We thank you for our husband, our wives, and we thank you for family. We thank you for this church. Churches all across this country. We thank you. We thank you for the membership. Those who have come to a realization that God is real and they need Jesus in their lives. We thank you for the compelling of the Holy Spirit. Those who have come to receive them as their Lord and Savior. Now we ask your blessings. Bless in a mighty way the hands that are being held. Bless those in our radio listening audience. Bless those who are streaming in. Bless, bless those, oh Heavenly Father, in, 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 in every way that you know that we need. For you said in your word, I'll provide for you every need according to your riches and glory. So we believe that your word is true. So bless right now. Keep us as our prayer. Let thy will be done. Give us the strength to accept whatever your will is. Lord, we will give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. And we pray for the one that will bring the message today. Allow him to be available to you. Open our ears and our hearts. If there's someone who needs to be saved, someone who desires to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, we ask that you would convict their minds, convert their hearts, compel them to come. It's in your name we pray. This is your servant's prayer. Let every heart and mind say amen. 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 And amen. As you return back to your seats, why don't you lift up your voices? Every I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come, I come, I come to say it just one more time I need anybody need him the oh you ought to just cry out to him I need the it just says I can't do it by myself every hour every minute I need the oh How many have been blessed already? Me now, my Savior. I come with my frailties. I come. I come with my insecurities. I, I come with my shame.
God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. We have been moved to ask one of the pulpit helpers, the sons, to be prepared to come and to share with us this morning in the name of Reverend Frederick Smalls. Uh, Reverend Smalls is the former pastor of the Christ Temple Baptist Church. He resides here in Columbus, Georgia, and we are humbled that he did not think he was so big that he could not come and sit under the leadership of another pastor. Usually when pastors pastor, they find it hard to follow the leadership of another pastor. We are thankful for his servant spirit. We thank God for his willingness to serve not only the church, but the pastor. He is one who do not count it above himself to go and pick up pastors when they come and they are guests to this church. Some people won't do that. They think that that's beneath them. But we thank God that he's been taught and he's been moved by the Holy Spirit to a spirit of humility. And so we're very grateful to him. His wife is present. Sister Smalls is in the audience. God bless you, Sister Smalls. And we want to ask if you would open your minds and your hearts as he come to share with us what God has shared with him. So after the male chorus sing, the next voice you will hear is the Reverend Frederick Smalls, our Director General of our Mount Calvary Association and Congress Christian Education, as well as the chair of our, he's the, thank you very much, I thought, <laughs> amen, we love, we, 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 it, 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 it's working, y'all, we're not hallucinating, ain't nobody hallucinating, <laughs> some people say it's God's, I'm not God, it's, that, that's them back there, amen, brother Frazier up in the audio, so thank you so very much for, for, for your being here, but I was going to say he is also the chair of, uh, of uh, director general or chair of our chaperones for the state. And so he's the one that works with our chaperones to ensure that our children are safe as they go to the Congress. And so he has availed himself to be a servant of God. So the next voice you will hear after the choir sings is the Reverend Frederick Smalls. Amen. God 
was the man that he should lie Every word he says is true He watches over me all day and night And if you trust in me, I'll do the same for you I said God's word will never God's word will never Was all but his word, God's word, his word will never pass away. It won't pass away. God's word will never pass away. God is the word. Jesus came and brought the word to us. It's the beginning and it's the end. He said, lean not to thine own understand, but always acknowledge him. He shall direct thy path. I'm talking about God's holy word. It's Jesus. Jesus. He is. He came amongst us all. Lead the way, talk to the disciples, y'all. Jesus, Jesus, my Savior, He is the living Word. Jesus, oh, His Word, my Savior, God will never pass away. It won't pass away. We give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for allowing me to be here for another day. I realize that I could have been dead and gone, but I'm thanks for God for his grace and mercy that he allowed me another chance. We give honor to our pastor, Flakes. Uh, thank God for a pastor who accepts me for who I am that I don't have to put on airs, uh, that I, I can just be who Fred is uh, and still know that he's still the pastor. Uh, he might be a little shorter than I am. I'm a little taller, but I still know that he's the pastor. Amen, amen. He, uh, thanks be unto God that he have a heart to love one. Uh, to even when you're traveling, he's calling to check on you. So it's not every day that you find a pastor that cares and love you like he do. Come on, give God praise for our pastor, for him having a, a true and loving heart. To other pulpit helpers, uh, to the deacons and officers of this church, and to all of God's children, uh, to the first lady in her absence, to first lady emeritus, Sister Flakes, and to my loving wife, Mrs. Darlene, grateful for her being here, and to... All of God's children, it's good to be in the Lord's house one more time. If you're having your care of your Bibles, let us travel to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Our scripture will be coming out of verses 12 through 24. I'm reading out of the NIV, but for our sermon uh, thought this morning, we will deal with verse 17 and 18. It says, take the heaven of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Verse 18 says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. When I was growing up, Pastor Fakes, in, uh, in my age, I used to leave home. Mama used to tell me something like, don't forget to call home. When I was a young boy, I did not understand, Pastor. I would leave and uh, go to Fort Polk, Louisiana, and call back 
home, she says, I didn't literally mean to call back where you were staying while you was here. She said, I meant for you to call on the Lord and tell him thank you that he gave you traveling grace. Thank you for the food. So this morning with the Lord help for those who are old school, I want to talk about don't forget to call home. But since we're living in this 21st century, I just want to talk about praying always. Pray always for the young generation. But for the old school, don't forget to call home. Uh, the book of Ephesians was written by Paul uh, at the, about the same time that he wrote Colossians. Probably during his imprisonment in Rome around A.D. 60. Um, pray always. The focus here, Paul called Christians to utilize the most powerful weapon they possess, and that's pray always. The function here is to encourage Christians to rediscover the power of prayer. I stopped by to tell you this morning, 4th Street, that we got to be praying. Uh, the war is, in verse 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. That's the war. Uh, the weapon of war is, in verse 13, where it says, therefore put on the full armor of God. Uh, that's a weapon of war. But finally, the ultimate uh, weapon is, in verse 18, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all of the saints. Sometime in war, the situation called for most powerful weapon of dispose. In this battle against the spiritual force of evil, in this battle of the so souls of men's and women's, the most powerful weapon of our disposal is sadly, it's often the weapon we pull out last. You might well talk to me, it's gonna be, it's gonna be all right. We, we go to palm readers, we go to everybody else, but I'll stop by to tell you, you can save time if you just call home. In other words, if you just pray, some of that stuff will be already worked out while you're burning up your gas driving around town to see somebody. I'm going to help you out. I'll help you out. Uh, notice here Paul calls on Christians to pray always in season. That's the Greek is, is opportunity. Though Paul saved it for last in this list, but I believe he does not because it is the most important weapon on battle. Not that it should be used as your last resources or when all else fail. No, he says that Christians are to pray on all occasions and always keep on praying. He has told the church at Thessalonica to pray without ceasing. I mean, pray continuously. Uh, I stopped by to tell you, you're going to have some rainy days you need to pray. Uh, you're going to have some good days, you're going to have to pray, and you're going to have some bad days. So I stopped by to tell you, uh, I remember back in the day, Pastor Flakes, when I was growing up, they used to sing a song called Sending Up My Temple. And I thought sending up my temple with me going outside getting some wood. But it meant you need to be praying because there will come a time when you can't pray. You already got some stuff already laid up there. Oh, sending up my temple. Oh, oh. got to pray. This is a foundation weapon on war. Uh, this morning, there is a war going on. It's a serious war a, that I aim at church, there are serious war going on with men's with men's. Uh, I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Uh, it's a serious war with women's with women. I'm just talking about that's a war uh, that's going on. I remember when I was in the army, the stuff that little tankers couldn't handle 
We had some called artillery. Call fire. If the artillery couldn't handle it, they had something like the fighter jets. They were dropped the B 52 bombers in. So, some stuff that I, the Lord know that you can't handle. So that's why he's waiting on you to call him. And he'll, all, he'll work it out for you. I'll stop by to tell you, there's some stuff in your life that you cannot handle. You need to call in the itinerary. But Paul is called for more than Pacific prayers. He's calling for a lifestyle of prayer. While there are certain times which we are going into our prayers, places and spend specific point quiet time with God. Then it's called to see all of life as a communion with God. I do think that we should see prayer as a kind of spiritual breathing. Something we do natural almost without thinking about it. Secondly, notice Paul called on Christian to pray in the spirit. What does it mean to pray in the spirit? I'm glad you asked. Is this different from just praying? According to a recent survey, almost 90% of Americans regularly pray in some regards. But just because one say he's praying does not mean that he is truly speaking to God. Uh, to pray in the spirit is to pray under the influence of the spirit. Anybody can get up and say some words. But is he praying within the spirit that's on the inside of him? You, you, you can tell those that's, that's saying some words. If you ain't moved by the spirit, you can tell it. You ain't got to open your mouth. You can just listen and to hear what they are saying. Uh, prayer and praying in the spirit under the influence of the spirit. Instead, to be filled with the Spirit, Christians are to live their lives under the influence of the Spirit, not any or anyone else. You missed it. I might as well repeat it. Wind up. Christians are to live their lives under the influence of the Spirit, not anything or anyone else. I think you got it. I ain't got to rewind it no more. To be joined with praying. It is he in us as the spirit of adoption that enable us to pray. It's what's on the inside that gonna help you to pray. If you ain't got the Holy Spirit in you, you ain't gonna know how to pray, what to pray for, but you got to have something on the inside. Mm. This is a call for Christians to be guided and led by the Holy Spirit in their prayers. That their prayers, requests are not just prayers memorized since youth or some wish lists. God, please could you give me this or that? Or by the way, no, our prayers is direct by the Holy Spirit. How does this work? In Romans 8, 26 and 27, help us out to understand this. In the same way, the Spirit help us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself in a seed for us growing, the word cannot express. Verse 27, and he who searches our heart know the mind of the spirit because the spirit in a seed for the saints in accordance with God's will. That's Romans 8, 26 and 27. The spirit in a seed for us in prayer. When we don't know what to say, the spirit does. When we just find the words, the spirit does. When our soul are hurting and we do not know why, what to ask, the spirit does. Uh, notice here, uh, the third point is who Christians are praying for. For all the saints, Christians are to pray 
one for another. Every time Pastor Stan, he says pray for one another, but also he tells us to love ye one another. I just stop by, just to enforce what you already know. I just come to encourage you this morning. Christians are to pray for this church. In this church, on our prayer list, they just listed names of them. I had never really been disciplined about prayer. I always found time to pray, but did not have the discipline myself like I do these days, Pastor. I had started a, a list of prayers needed to help me to remember what and who I need to pray about. Uh, I'm getting a little older, so my mind ain't what it used to be at 17, so I had to write down some stuff. Uh, and some of you is getting the same way. You better start right now on something when you think about it one time. Because if you don't, the next time you can't remember, you might well say, amen, we're going to be all right. I need to be reminded that the church should be high up there on your list. We need to be praying over our pastor and this whole church. We need to be in prayer over our members, especially those that are hurting and unable to help themselves. We need to be praying over the ministry of this church. What we are trying to do for God. I am thankful that we have a prayer meeting on Wednesday night. For just in case for those who don't know, on Wednesday night we do have a prayer meeting. Uh, at 7 o'clock, we are in prayer. Uh, but I been challenged by prayers offered in regardless to what's going on. That we not only grow in grace of giving, but also in a relationship with God. But I stopped by to tell us this morning to encourage us that we need to support our pastor when he stands and he says that a man should be married a man. Don't leave him out by himself. Pray for him if you ain't gonna go, but at least you pray for him while he's staying because somebody need to make a stand. So we ain't going to hang him out on the limb by itself. We're going to be the tree that's planted by the river of water. For those who didn't catch it, you're catching on the way home. But we're going to stand behind pastor. We're going to pray for him as he lead us, as he be led by the Holy Spirit. Finally, Paul calls on Christians that Ephesus to pray for him. I can understand that Paul in a great circumstances remember he told us that he is a prison of Christ. That's over there in Ephesians 3 and 1. He says Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles we know that while he lavish in Rome prison cell, he does not consider himself as a prisoner of Romans or Caesar, but of Christ. It is for the sake of Christ, spreading the good news of Christ, that he has been thrown into jail. Ha ah, Ephesians 19 said, pray also for me, that whatever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will furiously make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in change. Pray that I may declare and fearless as I should. Paul's request was for courage so that he might furiously continue preaching the gospel. That's why we're going to pray for pastors so he can continuously to be fearless in preaching God's word. Is that amazing? Paul is lamented in a prison cell as a direct result of his preaching the gospel. All can think about the preaching of the gospel. He does not ask for prayers of protection, prayer of comfort, or prayer of release. But he pray for the courage to stand firm, continue preaching the good news. Thanks be unto God. We got a pastor that it will continue to preach the good news. If he had to stand all by himself, he would stand firm. Hmm. And preach God's word. That's encouraging. How 
are committed, uh, we are to the task. What if we found ourselves in prison for our belief? We should still proclaim the good news. What if we found ourselves in a wrong end? Would you still proclaim the good news? What if you find ourselves beaten and trodden for the sake of Christ? Would you still proclaim the good news? Even the apostle Paul needed some friends. Mentioned first in Acts as a friend of Paul and then showed up again in this fourth Paul's letter. Perhaps he is the carrier of this letter having delivered it to the church of Ephesus. Paul want him to convert personal to them how he is doing to encourage them again in prison. Paul's concern is not himself, but how he might encourage others. I stop by to tell you, don't worry about your situation. If you help somebody else or pray for somebody else's situation, y'all will be worked out while you worry and focus on yours. It is typical and final greeting for Paul. Peace literally means salon. Paul wishes them the full blessings of life and grace to all who love Jesus with his undenying love. How would you describe your prayer life? Well, I don't worry with you long enough, and I'm grateful, Pastor, for an opportunity. Your car is hurting on the rain, slippery roads, sliding towards an own coming car at 50 miles an hour. What do you do? You pray, but what do you do when the weather is nice and you driving peaceful? Other words, when it's raining and you get ready to have an accident, you're going to pray. But what do you do when the sun shining? You don't even think about praying. You just riding and everything is all right. I'll stop by to tell you. The doctors come in to your examining room with the test results as a wondering frown on your face. What do you do? You pray, but what do you do when you sitting at your desk, at your work environment, everyday responsibilities of your job? When you are in the living room with the doctors looking at you and the doctor says, it's a boy or it's a girl. What do you do? You, you, you thank God for the baby. But what do you do when the diaper needs to be changed uh, in the midnight hour? But what do you do? Uh, I believe that it goes your prayer life. So goes your relationship with Jesus the Christ. We have some windows of opportunity for us to be deeper in our prayer life. This is called to pray. To pray powerful, to pray specifically, to pray constantly. Not just when the chips are down. Not just when all else have failed. Not just when you don't have anywhere else to turn. But pray always in every season, God is there listening to you praying. He has said uh, that he will never leave you or forsake you. My prayer is today, if you don't know Jesus the Christ, uh, you won't leave here without finding out more about him. And as I leave you, I want to tell you a little bit about him. Uh, that he came down uh, through 42 generations. I want to tell you about him, uh, that he was born uh, in Bethlehem. Uh, I want to tell you uh, that they wrapped him uh, in swaddling clothes. Uh, I want to tell you uh, that he tabernacled around here for 33 and a half years. Uh, I want to tell you uh, that on that Thursday uh, they took him uh, from Judgment Hall 
hall uh, to judgment hall. Uh, I want to tell you uh, that one Friday uh, they took him up uh, on a hill called Cabaret. Uh, I want to tell you uh, they put nails uh, in his hands. Uh, they hung him uh, on the cross. Uh, they put a spike uh, in his side. Uh, the blood uh, and water uh, was streaming down. Uh, they hung him high uh, and they stretched him wide. Uh, I want to tell you uh, he laid his head uh, and he died. Uh, anybody uh, know he died? Uh, they put a crown uh, of thorns uh, upon his head. Uh, I'm glad uh, that he died uh, for me one Friday. But that's not how uh, the story ends. Uh, they took him down uh, off that old uh, rugged cross. Uh, they put him uh, into a borrowed uh, tomb. Uh, and I'm glad uh, that it was borrowed. Uh, I'm trying to tell you uh, about this story. They put him in uh, that borrowed tomb. Uh, he stayed there all uh, night Friday. Thanks be unto God. Uh, but that's not how the story in. Uh, he stayed there all Oh, they said it, but that's not how the story in he stayed there oh nice Saturday night but let me tell you the good news Well, ain't that good news? Well, ain't that good news? Well, I've laid down my and I've shouldered up my cross and I'm going home to Jesus. Ain't that good news? Hallelujah, that's good news. Somebody prayed for you. Thank you, Jesus. That's good news that you might be saved. I've laid down my burden and I've shouldered up my cross and I'm going home to Jesus. Ain't that good news? the church are open. of the church are open. Now that's good news. Well, I've laid down my bird and I've shouldered up my cross and I'm going home to Jesus. Ain't that good news? There may be one here this morning. Reverend Small has challenged us all to call home, to pray in season, out of season, to pray not just when things are difficult, but to pray even when the sun is shining. But let me just go ahead and say this to you. Somebody call home for you. Don't ever think that you came to Jesus just on your own intelligence. But a mother prayed for you when you weren't even thinking about praying for yourself. A father prayed for you 
that one day that your heart would be touched your mind would be convicted your heart would be converted and prayed that one day you would come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord for yourself because mom and daddy knew that you couldn't get into heaven because of them grandmama knew that you couldn't get in heaven because of her granddaddy maybe an uncle or an aunt but I just come by to ask this church to be praying to continue to pray that God will send us who he wants us to have and send us what we need there may be someone here you've been looking going from church to church and this is an opportunity for you to allow God to answer your prayer if you've been praying to God for a church that's convenient we're not that church we're not a convenient church we're a church that's going to trans transform by way of the Holy Spirit we're a church that's going to challenge one to look at one's lifestyle to look at whether one's life line up with the Word of God someone's been praying for you that this morning that that husband or that wife would come to Christ maybe you've been looking you've been searching we pray that the Holy Spirit would allow you to end that search this morning and to come to God today to unite with this church where we can strive for the advancement of his kingdom maybe you're back home from a military assignment and you're now back in Columbus Georgia Fort Benning and you said while you were in Iraq maybe in Afghanistan maybe in Korea maybe in Germany wherever you were that when I get back home I'm going to unite with some church and now you have that opportunity we pray that you will allow this opportunity to not pass you today but you will step out boldly with confidence and come to Jesus unite with this church hallelujah is there one maybe you've been relocated because of a job relocation good news you ought to come this morning well I've laid down my bird and I've shouldered up my cross and I'm going home to Jesus ain't that good news amen that's good news you may be seated Jesus ain't that good news amen amen and amen we want to thank Reverend Smalls for challenging us this morning and 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 really helping us understand that we have the privilege as well as the opportunity to call home and gave us a tremendous illustration of how Paul prayed even while he was in jail he called on Jesus and so we pray that we will continue to have the kind of prayer life in a prayer life simply means we are talking to God constantly and we pray that you will continue to allow God to talk to you amen amen, amen. we want to ask now that you will bring the tithe and the offering as God has commanded us to do I know some people say well pastor that's Old Testament well just turn to Matthew 23 23 if that's an issue turn to Matthew 23 23 and allow his word to speak to you as well and if you pray if you desire and you pray that you become a tither then God will make it happen he will move your heart to be obedient unto him because tithing is a demonstration of one's willful obedience unto God and if you're saved if you've been convicted by the Holy Spirit to accept Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior
then this is how he instruct his children to demonstrate their obedience. So we're going to ask you to stand to your feet from the balcony. We're going to ask that you would come on the from the pulpit. We're going to ask the choir to lead. We're going to ask the pulpit to come now to give their tithe and their offering to lead in that. We're going to ask that you would go. Um, and then we're going to ask that you would follow the instructions of the ushers. Amen. Follow the instructions of the ushers as they give instructions to bring the tithe and offering as we worship through giving. bus ministry that provides transportation for those who do not have transportation we thank God for your generosity in helping to support these ministries <laughs> 